Okay, hello everybody. Uh, this is Jose Blasco here. We are about to start the session. Today is February 10. Um, while I'm introducing the session, it would be very useful if you could confirm with a quick message on the chat box that you hear my voice. Uh, a quick hello would do. Uh, again, just a, a quick sound check uh, while I'm, I am introduc introducing the session. Okay, so uh, welcome to the session today. As I said, today is February 10. My name is Jose Blasco, and today we are getting together uh, to look at the markets from a point of view of swing trading, which means that we're going to be using uh, intermediate and larger time frames, if you wish, in order to identify market opportunities and come up with very specific plans, and then go over execution and place the orders and everything else, uh, which means that uh, it would be good uh, that you guys are ready to work with me uh, in the context of a team, a little bit of teamwork, where if you have any feedback for me as I go over the plan, uh, feel free to type anytime. Uh, if I do have questions for you, please uh, work with me uh, and provide me with answers as well as if you have questions for me, uh, I will be the one providing answers as well. Okay, so we work, uh, you know, in this uh, collaborative environment uh, that's going to make the, the session richer and more useful to you. Of course, out of all the trades that we'll put together, um, uh, obviously you are free to execute those trades with a large size or a small size or anywhere in between, as well as utilizing demo account with paper money or utilizing Real capital, all of these, of course, will be will be your decisions. Okay, but the plan of the trade will be very specific, as you will see, and uh, will be ready to execute. Okay, I'll be I'll be placing orders on my end and, and putting those trades in the market. Okay, so let's uh, begin. We have one last step before we go, which is I need to read the disclaimer for you. So I'll do this quickly. Disclaimer: uh, the following video clips demonstrations are for educational and instructional purposes only. Predictive provides these videos pu purely for the purpose of demonstrating a method of using the product. Users understand. That all the content used in the video is purely for demonstration purposes only and is not a guide and does not provide any indication or prediction of actual results. As a user, you understand and agree that hypothetical results obtained through a demonstration do not indicate in any way the results you may receive from using our products. Here we go. And now we can say the session has been properly, officially uh, introduced. Okay. And here you can see I got my chart ready. Uh, everything is running here. Um, I got black background, white background. I need to give you a few uh, specifics. I need to give you specific instructions. So you understand exactly what I'm what I'm doing here with those charts. What I'm what I, what is it that I'm looking for? Uh, so you understand the rationale behind the trades I'm gonna put in place. Okay, but before we go there, very quick, I want to remind you that today is uh, February 10. We're getting together for swing trades. Okay, swing uh, on Thursday it will be on the 13th. We're gonna get together again, but it's gonna be for intraday. Okay, so uh, if you guys are doing multiple styles of trading, uh, then uh, I'm counting on you join me again on Thursday. And what's the difference? Well, very simple. Today we are doing swing and therefore we are using larger time frames in order to catch and ride intermediate term and long term moves, uh, attempting uh, to profit from those moves. OK, uh, what's going to happen on Thursday? Well, on Thursday it's going to be intraday. And what's the difference? Well, then on that day, we're going to be focusing on the lower time frames. Again, same story, catching moves in the marketplace but in this case, it's going to be short term. Okay, so intraday versus swing. I think it's self-explanatory, but just in case. Okay, and also before we jump into the markets today, really, uh, when it comes to economic calendar and reports and news and everything else, I don't have much to say. You can see most of the colors here very handy in the FX3 website. Everything is yellow and orange, so nothing is too important at this moment in time uh, or expected to really create uh, incredible impacts. Okay, of course there are many things going on out there. And, you know, next thing you know, something happens. OK, so we certainly need to be aware of the dynamics of the market, uh, which are always changing, especially uh, now with the coronavirus and many other things going on. But at the same time, uh, you know, short term, there is nothing that uh, should be any issue or any concern. And therefore, we can just focus on the charts and uh, plan trades, uh, I would say, pretty relaxed. OK, cool. OK, so let's begin. So now a few things. What do we have here? Uh, I have three charts. Okay. Why do I have? Well, actually, I have six. But if you look at it vertically, I have, uh, you know, the 21 minute time frame to be combined with a four hour time frame. That would be for swing trades, what I would call swing intra intraday. So if you think that, uh, if you think about uh, four hours as your reference and you think about each trade is going to last a few candles and each candle is four hours. So here we are talking about doing swing trades that are going to be uh, quite active. That's why I'm calling it swing intraday, meaning that those trades are going to be a full day, two days, three days, maybe 
something like that, but then you're out. Okay. Where in the middle, we got the 55 minute time frame combined with the daily time frame. You can see the D there in the background. So in other words, if you're going to stay in the market, in the market for multiple candles, where every candle is a day. So that's a multiple day trade where on the very right, I'm looking at the 144 minute time frame combined with the weekly time frame. And same story, if we're going to be in the market for a few candles in the weekly time frame, these will produce trades, which are uh, of a multiple week duration. Okay, so it's all swing, but moving to the left is more active, moving to the right, it's more passive, and in the middle, well, it's in somewhere in the middle. Uh, and uh, we're going to be exploring all those different possibilities. And uh, which currencies are we going to use for that? Well, of course, as you can see on the upper left, I got the majors ready to be used. Okay. We got our most liquid forex currency, per currency pairs, but it doesn't mean we're going to use only those. We can also use the miners, which are also very liquid. I have my whole list of miners here. Um, and uh, those produce uh, very nice opportunities as well. Um, sometimes even with swaps, they pay you while you stay in the trade, you, are, you receive payments in the form of swaps, apart from catching the move and writing the move. Okay? So we're going to be exploring all those different uh, opportunities uh, one at a time. Now, um, so now you understand that you know the setup with the two charts on the left is for active swing traders. The setup with the charts in the middle is for swing traders that are less active. And the setup with the two charts on the right is for traders that are swing traders that are passive. Okay. Now you understand that. Now, I also want to explain why is it that the charts on the top are white background color, where, where the charts in the bottom are black, uh, black background uh, color. Okay? Why did they change the color? Because I did that on purpose. So why am I trying to say by using two different colors? Well, basically what I'm trying to say is that the use of the upper chart okay, it has a different purpose compared to the use of the bottom chart. Okay. So what is the purpose okay, of, the, of the dark background uh, charts? Okay? Well, the purpose is to answer a question, which is very simple. Is it time to trade now? Okay? And the answer is yes or no. Okay? Is it time to trade? Yes or no? Uh, and if the answer is yes, okay, so the next question that comes together is which direction? Okay? Which direction meaning, meaning long or short? So we are basically using the bottom chart, the one with the black background. You will see me that do that in just a, just you know just give me a very few minutes and I'll start. So you will see me use that uh, bottom chart um, to kind of give myself permission uh, of trading or not. Okay, uh, how many times think about it for a minute, right? How many times you've been in a trade and then you know you got stopped out and then you're like, oh my god, why did I even take this trade? Okay, so the idea here is to use the bottom chart to make sure we understand if it's time to trade or not. Uh, and if it's not, then we'll go for another currency. And if it is, before we start working on the upper charts, the ones that are white color, then we'll need to also define if we should go long or short. Okay. And once we have concluded all of this, uh, and we understand that, then we'll switch uh, and begin utilizing the the upper uh, charts. Okay. And so what's the purpose? Okay. Well, the purpose of the upper charts, the ones with the white background color, would be to uh, specify. Okay. Specify uh, in a precise manner okay, uh, which are the prices for me to buy at and sell at. Okay. In other words, uh, thanks to the upper the upper charts, uh, I'll be able to come up with the proper location for a good entry, either long or short, the proper location for a good target. Uh, in case I'm right on the trade, uh, and also the proper location uh, for a stop loss, which uh, we will be using for every single trade. Uh, so we will know what to do. We will know when to exit in case we are wrong. That way, everything is under control. And finally, the last thing that you will see me do is activate, uh, you know, the uh, what in trading view is called the um, the order panel. And here I will just input a series of values to end up with. Uh, the specific size that I should be using for this trade. Okay? In other words, you know, should I take this trade with five lots, with two lots, with uh, you know, uh, eight mini lots? What is the size for the trade? And now I will have entry stop target size, and then I'm, I'll be using a MetaTrader 4 on my phone, which I have it here ready to go. You can see, okay? 
uh, and I'm going to be executing those threads, okay? And by the way, why am I going to use MetaTrader for my phone? Because that way I trick myself, okay? I trick myself when it comes to the emotions of a trader. Um, we all know trading is an emotional game. So in order to trick myself and be less emotional, uh, when I do planning, I do planning and I don't think about execution. So I use the computer screen. And then when I do execution, then I don't think about the chart. I just think about execution. So to trick myself, I am using a different device with a different trading platform, which is MT4 on my phone in my case. Your case may be different and it's fine. Okay, It's kind of like if you work in a hedge fund, you have the market analyst looking for market opportunities and then they pass the trades to the traders who execute the trades. Okay, And it's, it's a different person. So there is no emotional attachment to the trade if you compare the trader and the market analyst. So I'm kind of kind of tricking myself to be uh, you know, a person with, with two sides, okay? My analyst side and my trader side, okay? Very good. So uh, anyway, so having said all of that, uh, and I know that if you've been in, in the session with me before, it, it was a little bit of a repeat, okay? But uh, I think it's important that you understand uh, what we're doing and most importantly, why. So you understand and you can follow easily the session today. And most importantly, you can replicate all of this uh, later when the session is over because uh, we're getting together today, but there are many more days uh, when the trade is in it. Okay, so what do we have? Okay, so I just clicked on Australian dollar, Canadian dollar. So this is what we have on the charts. And I'm going to start looking at the weekly time frame. Okay, weekly time frame uh, of the, the New Zealand dollar, Canadian dollar, the, sorry, the Aussie dollar, Canadian dollar, as you can see here, weekly time frame. Okay, so notice that in the bottom part of the screen, I have a tool called Auto Climate. Okay, this, this by the way, it's a, a tool uh, that has no monthly subscription. Uh, and if you want to have access to it, uh, we have developed this tool in our company. And uh, certainly you can have access to it. It's a free subscription. There is an $8 uh, activation fee. Uh, so there, there is a, a minor fee to activate the tool, but then the tool is free forever. Okay? So if you want to utilize it later, I can show you how to, how to do that. But by the way, you don't need to, uh, meaning that uh, what I'm about to do with AutoClimate, some of you may have been trading for a while, and you know other ways and other approaches on how to do your preparation, okay? The question is, or the key, is that you are able to answer the purpose that we discussed before, which is, is it time to trade? Yes or no? And if so, should I go long or should I go short? Okay, so if you have a, a proper tool that makes you objective, that is proving to give you good results when you trade, then you're fine. If not, uh, and you want to experiment with AutoClimate, uh, well, you will see me use it today, uh, and if you wanna, if you wanna access AutoClimate, I'll show you later how to do that. Okay. So anyway, so what do we have with AutoClimate? Well, with AutoClimate, uh, what you need to do is look at the dot on the very, very right, and notice that it's red color, meaning that we are dealing with a down market. Okay, it's, it's moving down in the weekly time frame. Uh, not a surprise there with the color; it's quite intuitive. But what's key is that notice that some dots are thick like the one that we are focusing on right now, where there are times where the dots are not thick, the dots are thin, okay? So when the dots are thin, okay, basically it means that the direction is not defined. So what should you do? Nothing, no trade, okay? But now it's not the case. Now we do have a thick dot. We do have a thick dot, and that means that the direction is defined, the direction is confirmed, therefore the dot is thick, okay? So that's a good beginning. We have a down market, which is, confirmed to be a down market. So certainly uh, we have an initial permission to trade to the downside, okay? But then uh, to have a formal final permission to trade to the downside, we need to look at the stats. And because the climate is down, uh, I want you to focus on the middle stats. The middle stats refer to the down market. You can see that because of the tiny down arrow right in front of standard deviation. Right here, there is a down arrow. Just like here on the left, we have an up arrow, which the, which is the statistics for up climate, which we don't care about now, okay? So because it's a down climate, I'm gonna focus on that number, 5.1, and because uh, um, we always give ourselves a little uh, extra breathing room, let's call it this way. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna run this number always up uh, from 5.1, we'll make it six. So we use a single digit, so that way it's going to be an easier way for us to interpret that information. Okay, so round up, always round up. So 5.1 becomes 6, and this basically tells you that in normal market conditions, and normal means high probability, okay? In irrational market conditions, uh, which could happen, uh, trading in an irrational market is also riskier, isn't it? So in a normal market condition, 
uh, statistics suggest that the down climate, the down market that we have, should last for six candles. And guess what? It's, this is candle number six. The current is number six. So what does that mean? That this, this climate has been traveling already in that direction for six, okay? And therefore, the moment the current candle completes, which is four days and eight hours from now, okay? The moment the, ca the current cal candle completes, uh, that's it. Uh, entering trades will not be recommended because you would be basically late to the party. You would be entering in the right direction, but in a climate that is about to uh, to be concluded, at least based on stats, this is what stats uh, would have us expect. Okay? Uh, but we still got four days and eight hours to go, meaning that for swing trades, it's still a valid market environment where we can still uh, enter trades and write moves for you know four days or more. Okay? So certainly, this uh, basically is giving us a go. Okay? We have a go to begin looking at uh, the Australian dollar, Canadian dollar uh, for a shorting opportunity. Okay? So now that I know I want to short, uh, and I got permission to do it, which is my first question, isn't it? So my second question is, okay, let's use the upper charts now to get more precise, okay, to get more precise at uh, finding a good entry, okay? And here, some of you, I'm sure that you, you may draw support and resistance lines. Some of you may use FIPS, et cetera, et cetera. So what I do is I use another piece of our technology. We call it auto UFOs, okay? And UFOs, okay, in this case, if you haven't seen it before in any of the sessions I did before, so UFOs stands for on-field orders. That's what it means, okay? That's what it means. And on-field orders uh, for what? Well, because it's red color, it's on-field orders to sell. So there is on-field orders to sell around 89.20, and there is on-field orders to sell around 89.63, okay? 89.63, okay? So that's that's what we've got, okay? Um, so the question is, uh, we know this market is gonna fall, but you know, shorting here, okay, where the current price is, uh, it's not a crazy thing to be done. The climate is down, so this thing from here may begin dropping. This could happen, but what would be higher probability, and this is what we're looking for as traders, isn't it? We look for us. Uh, would be higher probability is instead of shorting at the current price, uh, would be to wait for this to rally a little bit, get into where the on-field orders are, and from there now you have a way higher chance for this market to fall because the beginning of the drop would take place where the sellers are, uh, like uh, common sense would suggest, isn't it? Uh, now, to make it this even higher probability, uh, what I would love to attempt, okay, which is not a guarantee we're going to be able to do it, but we're going to try because try means high probability. And, and uh, when I say try, I don't mean hope. When I say try, I mean we're going to see if the market gives us a scenario, a setup that matches our rules, and we'll try to see if we find a setup. If we don't find a setup, we don't trade. We'll change time frame or we'll change currency, okay? So we don't... We don't guess, okay? Uh, so when I use the word try, you make sure you, you know what I mean by that, okay? I'm, I'm not saying let's try for the best, okay? That's, that's a form of hoping. We never do that, okay? We, we rely on rules, not on uh, guesses, okay? So in order to add more odds, okay, what I want to focus on is that the value of the EMA on the weekly time frame, okay? The EMA on the weekly time frame, let me write it down, by the way, because the EMA is an exponential moving average. I'm pretty sure most of you know that, right? But you are probably wondering which one. Well, I'm using EMA9, okay? EMA9. So I got the EMA9, okay, which is currently pointing at 89.53, okay? And why is that value relevant for me? Well, because the EMA, um, especially when it's applied to key timeframes, uh, such as Fibonacci timeframes or key timeframes like the daily, the weekly, the four-hour timeframe. So when, when EMAs are applied to key timeframes, uh, they are often the source of additional on-field orders on top of the on-field orders already available. Why? Because, you know, notice that price went below the EMA, right? Uh, let me zoom in. Maybe if I zoom in, it's going to be better for you guys. So notice how uh, price went, you know, below the EMA and then price came back to the EMA and then from there dropped and then came back to the EMA and from there dropped and came back to the EMA and then dropped again. So what's happening at this EMA price, where basically you got computers around the world, uh, you know, that are placing orders to sell or buy, depending if you are above or below the, the, the EMA, okay? And uh, this is not a sure thing because it really certainly depends on the climate, okay, which we already said is down. But at the same time, uh, it could be the source of additional on-field orders. Uh, and that's odds because we said we are in a defined climate going down. We got on-field orders to sell 
at this price point. The two things together already should push the market down. But on top of that, the EMA may be a new additional source of on-field orders to be added to the market, on-field orders that are not in the market yet. So then you have kind of like three forces working your way instead of two forces working your way. And therefore, I welcome that because I got, you know, if I only had one currency to trade, then maybe I would not be that picky. But since I got so many currencies to choose from, I could certainly be picky and be demanding and require from my UFOs above to line up with this value. Okay, Line up with this value to have a nice, powerful confluence that would make everything more powerful. And in this sense, I'm going to get a no-go in this trade. Okay, Sorry for the bad news, guys. We're going we're gonna to find another trade in a second. But I have a no-go, and I, I need you to understand why. If you look at the price points where I got on field orders, it goes from 89.20 to 89.50, but my EMA is 53. In other words, my EMA, it's in the middle of those two pockets of on-field orders. In the middle, I got, uh, I got uh, the on-field orders. Uh, so I got the EMA, okay? And this is one of those situations, okay? This is one of those situations where, uh, I'm sure you've seen that often, where price goes to where the EMA is, and then it goes above, okay? And then it drops, and people wonder, why is that? Why, why did we have this tease? Why did we did it go above and then, and then it drop? And when that happened, in most cases, it's because we have a setup like this, where the EMA is somewhere here in the middle of nowhere, which is the case, and then, you know, price comes to here, Okay, surpasses that by a little bit, enters another area where we got the sell on field orders and then drops, and then people wonder why. Okay, so, so that's why we got, a, you know, that, that's why this happens sometimes. So, one trade that could be executed here is to ignore the bottom UFO and focus on the upper UFO. That could be one trade that could be taken. But again, then I would only have two forces in my favor, which is the UFO on the climate. I want three forces on my favor. I want the EMA to line up. With the ufo okay and because it's not happening with the australian dollar canadian dollar in the 144 minute time frame combined with the weekly so then what i'm gonna do is i'm, I'm gonna have a no go on that one because i'm picky picky equals demanding demanding equal more probabilities okay and therefore what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna look at the daily time frame to see if in the daily time frame i do have a better setup that makes sense and that allows me to take a, a healthier trade with more odds so let's take a look. Okay. So what do we have? Well, we have a thick dot red color. Good beginning. How many we got? One. So this is the beginning of a climate. The climate is down. So I will focus on the middle figure. I will ignore the one on the, on the left. That's for up climates. So forget about that. And remember, 547 will round up in this case. It's a coincidence, but it's also six. Okay. So this climate is supposed to last six days. Okay. So when this begins dropping, 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 it could be up to six days. This is already day number one. We still got seven hours to go for this day to conclude. So basically, we can be in a trade for five days and seven hours. OK, so certainly, potentially, we could have a nice swing trade to be executed. So up to this point, we have a go. Okay, Up to this point, we have a go. Now, of course, the value of the EMA in this case is showing up at 16. OK. 89, 16. So the question is, if I look at the 55 minute time frame and I turn on auto UFO, you see the little the little uh, eye with a, with, a, with a line that is crossing the eye, that means uh, the, the auto UFOs are being hidden. So I'm going to activate that by just clicking on it. And the moment I click on it, and by the way, I will I will explain later if you're curious uh, how to uh, how you can have access to those tools. Um, uh, and again, so what do we have here? So we have on field orders, notice how uh, we saw that as well on the 144 minute time from earlier, isn't it? We had on field orders at uh, 89 uh, 20, which is right here, 89 20, okay? Uh, and it goes all the way to 36, and now it overlaps with another pocket of on field orders all the way to 50. So basically, there is a range of 30 pips from 89 20 to 89 50, okay? All that range where we got two large pockets of sell on field orders. Okay, and you may be saying, well, wait a minute, it's not lining up with the UFO because, sorry, it's not lining up with the EMA because the EMA is actually a 16. Okay, it's 16, it's 0 0.8916. And on the top, we got 0 0.8920, okay? And, and you're right, you're right, it's not lining up. But at the same time, uh, think about the M 
when you think of exponential moving average, what does the M mean? It's moving. And what does that mean? It moves. Okay, it moves. Um, uh, and how does it move? Well, it moves in the same direction as the price. So the current price of the Aussie CAD is 8900. Uh, the EMA is 16. So if the CAD goes up by 16 pips, the EMA will go up by a few. Okay, and maybe from 16 it becomes 21. And if it becomes 21, guess what? At the moment of the entry, where we, when we get that market to get to the UFO, guess what? The EMA is going to be somewhere around these lines. And therefore, now price enters the, the price zone from 20 to 50, where we got 30 pips with multiple pockets of sell on field orders and an EMA, which may add more in the context of a climate that just started. And if all of this is true, which it's, it's quite objective on my computer screen, isn't it? So what's going to happen? Then the CAD is going to fall uh, and we're going to catch a high probability move and profit from it. Okay, so my friends, it's looking like we have a trade here. Uh, I need to have a few more steps to complete the plan. Of course, I'm doing this uh, in one hand. I'm, I'm speaking very fast and hopefully you can follow me. In the other hand, uh, you know, if I was to do this by myself, I would have already executed five trades. It's taking me a, long, a lot of time because I have to share all my thoughts in order for, for you to understand what I'm doing since, um, you know, we, we, haven't, we haven't spent uh, too many sessions together uh, as of yet. Okay, we will. We will get to, to understand well our trading style by spending time together and, and uh, therefore I'll be able to be a little more agile in the sessions. But for now, hopefully, uh, I'm finding the balance with uh, not speaking too fast, but fast enough. Uh, and at the same time, not moving too slow, but but also slow enough. Okay, okay. Uh, Yemi, you're asking about the value of the standard deviation. Okay, so it means uh, that when that climate begins moving in a specific direction, um, based on probability, uh, you know what is likely to happen. Okay, so think think about a standard deviation. Um, and, and again, if if some of your experts in, experts in mathematics, you know, I apologize in advance because this is an oversimplification of what, what a standard deviation means. But somehow, uh, one way you could think about it is to think about it as something likely to happen. I'm actually likely to be more precise is 68.4% of the times. Okay, So 68.4% of the times, the climate in this case should be six days. And therefore, entering on day one, where the climate could propagate up to six days easily, means that you are not late to the party. Okay, So I'm sure you have all heard the trend is your friend. And it's true, but then it bends at the end. So are we close to the bending or not yet? So in this case, it seems the bending would be more like six days later and it's still day one. Okay? So that's what it means, Yemi. Uh, and that's why um, you know uh, we, we're having a very objective answer to, is it time to trade yes or no? And if so, what direction? Okay, that's that's what we're doing, okay? Good, so anyway, so let me disable all the UFOs there. Let me enable you to uh, auto UFOs in the bottom part. So I can also look at where my targets should be because um, up to this point let me load plenty plenty of market data here okay uh, up to this point uh, i'm loading the australian dollar canadian dollar uh, in the daily time frame and notice how everything i've got it's sell on field orders okay but uh, the app the technology is not finding anything green it's all red which means that i'm gonna have to move to the weekly time frame to see if I find anything green, which could qualify as buy orders, and there is nothing. Uh, and therefore, I'm going to have to move to the monthly time frame to see if I find something on a monthly time frame. And yes, in the monthly time frame, I do find buy on field orders located at 83.61. Uh, okay, so my friends, there is a humongous amount of room for uh, this currency to drop. We're talking about around 600 pips. Uh, if so, that would be an amazing swing trade. Now, on the other hand, I will tell you that uh, I don't think uh, this currency is going to travel 600 pips in six days. Uh, we said the climate is likely going to last for six days. And at the rate at which currencies are moving nowadays, you, if you look at a daily ATR, um, I mean, uh, let's say we are moving 100 pips a day to run numbers, uh, then yes, in six days, you may, write, you may reach 600 pips. But that means that this currency just keep falling and falling and falling nonstop. Okay, falling and falling and falling nonstop. And that is normally not the case. Markets don't go up and down in a straight line. So probably we're going to set that target at 83.61 because this is what the market is giving us. Okay, and we're going to be respectful of that. 
uh, because certainly there is potential for the market to go there. Okay? And our climate that is supposed to like six days may end up lasting 12 days or 10 days. It could be, it's less likely, but it could. So we will use 83.61 as a target, but at the same time, uh, and I will not have time to discuss here in the session, but for the ones of you with some more experience, I would certainly suggest that you guys go ahead and uh, you look into some trade management techniques where you may trail your stop, you may scale out of the trade, you may move your stop to break even. You know, um, all of you, I'm sure you have certain rules where you do things to protect yourself in case uh, the market doesn't reach your final target and at least you can still collect some profits out of this trade, okay? So just keep that in mind. We have a fantastic target in a fantastic location and every time, uh, you know, uh, this is the, the right mindset for a trader. Every time a trade is kind of too good to be true, well, then you need to consider it may be too good to be true, okay? So we need to be realistic. We don't want to be dreamers because then we don't reach the target and next thing you know, it's very frustrating and then we trade in revenge mode because we got upset, okay? So we got we to gotta be professional at all times, take money when the market tells us, but also be realistic without falling into being greedy, okay? So in other words, what's the plan for this trade? Well, if you think about it, we're going to be selling the Australian dollar, Canadian dollar, our entry point is going to be 89.20, isn't it? I said that earlier. So 89.20 is because of that. 89.20, that's going to be the entry that will coincide with the EMA. As this market goes up a few pips, the EMA will be lining up with 20. Okay, so we're going to be fine. Uh, the stop needs to go above 53. Uh, I'm going to round up to 51. Actually, this is not rounding up. This is really adjusting to four decimal places. So I'll make it 51. And then, because uh, Forex is a decentralized market and its broker may have different quotes, uh, I don't want to be stopped out by one or two pips and then see the market go my way. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add three additional pips of breathing space. So uh, that's going to make my stop to be located at 89.54. Uh, okay. 89.54. Uh, that would be my, my stop. In other words, I'm risking 34 pips in this particular trade. And then for the target, okay, and again, uh, I will leave it to you guys to use multiple targets, scale out, do all those fancy things, which you should, because again, this trade is a 16 to one, okay? You're risking 34 in order to make 559 pips. It's, it's, it's really nice on paper, okay? And when that's the case, we always need to trigger our um, uh, skeptical, um, healthy, healthy skeptical mindset, okay? Uh, and certainly do uh, uh, some trade, active trade management on this trade so you don't leave money on the table, okay? But uh, anyway, you sometimes the market just collapses like the world is ending, right? And in this case, you have room to make 559, okay? So we're going to load the gun, shooting for that, but then we're going to do trade management uh, to be realistic, okay? That's the plan for the trade, okay? Now, uh, the, last, the last question before I place an order is the size, okay? How many units, okay? How many lots, how many micros? Uh, so uh, I want to do that by defining the amount of money I want to risk on the trade. And just because we are all different and it's going to be easier if I use raw numbers, I'm going to pretend that all of us have a $10,000 account. And I'm going to pretend that all of us want to risk 1% per trade, which is 100%, sorry, 1% of a $10,000 account is uh, $100. So I will pretend that all of us want to risk $100 in the trade. Of course, all of you are going to be in a different position. So make sure you do your math. Uh, in input, your value here, mine in this uh, exercise will be $100. And this tells me I need to trade 34 micros, where if you use MT4, you know that should be input as 0 0.39. Okay, 39 micros is 0 0.39. So let's do it. Let me input uh, the trade in the system. Okay, let me get my phone on the screen. Here we go. So first, uh, I don't have the Aussie CAD on the list, okay, which means that I have to tap plus. I'm going to go for X Pro and then Aussie CAD, just tap on it. So now I have it in my code list, okay? So you can see the Aussie CAD is now here in the bottom part. I just added it, okay? So this is just empty for stuff. So I'm going to tap on it now, okay? And then bring this to the left so you can see everything nice. And we're going to place a new order, okay? And good practices going from bottom to top. Uh, from, sorry, from top to bottom. So first, I'll select a sell limit order. Next, 
I will go for a 39. 39. Here we go. Uh, that's going to be the size. Next, the price. We said uh, 89.20 is the entry. We also said the stop red color. It's uh, 89.54. And finally, the final target we said was going to be 83.61, if I am not mistaken. Okay. Now, before we click the button, good practices. Okay. So 39 is 39. Good. Uh, 89.20 is 89.20. Nice. 61 is 61. Nice. And 89.54 is 89.54. So everything is good. I got it all right. Okay. And therefore, it's time to hit the place button. And the order is now in the system. That's it. Now we are waiting for the Aussie CAD to rally up a little bit from here. We are waiting for it to rally here. When it goes there, we'll get filled at 20. And then all those forces okay, are likely, based on probabilities, to push it down. Uh, and if not, we have a stop to protect ourselves. Okay? Cool. Okay. Um, very nice. Samuel, I can see that you have a fantastic use of the multiple languages out there. Very, very nice. Uh, very nice. Uh, cool. Good. I'm looking to see if there is any question. There is none. Okay, good. Perfect. So I'm going to go for another currency pair. Okay. And because it took a little bit of time for me to go through the whole process from now until the end of the session, I'm going to be a bit more agile. But also because we have already put in place an Aussie dollar trade. Uh, trade. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go for the next one, which is Canadian dollar. But wait a minute. We got Aussie cut. So I'm just going to go for the Swiss franc. Okay. So to not to repeat currencies. There is nothing wrong if you manage your correlations and you have the right size and everything else. There is nothing wrong to look at the other Aussie, to look at the Canadian dollar currencies, nothing wrong. But since we've got limited time to be together uh, in order to not to add correlation risk, I'm just moving straight into Swiss yen. Okay, And I'm going to start from left to right, from right to left, like I did before. We'll start first looking at the um, weekly time frame chart. Let me make a bit more space. Here we go. So we have it. So what do we have? Well, we have a thick dot confirmed climate. It's currently 11 candles into this climate. And based on stats, it's blue, right? So I'm looking at the up climate. I'm not looking at the middle value. I'm looking at the value on the left. Okay. So this value suggests 455. Okay. In other words, this climate is likely going to last for five weeks. And this climate has been running in that direction already for 11 weeks. In other words, uh, buying now, I'm not saying it's crazy because there is a defined and confirmed direction, but probably you are about to reach when the trend is going to bend. Okay, We are probably late to the party and therefore we are not going to force a trade. We can also see actually on the daily time from already that down climate started kicking in. Okay, So there is a already kind of like a, an important push on the lower time frames in the opposite direction. So certainly this climate based on stats and based on what we see on the daily, it's likely going to change soon. Okay, so what are we gonna do? Same thing we did before. We ignore the weekly, we have a no-go, and then we're gonna start planning the trade on the daily. The daily is giving us a confirmed climate, thick dot, red color. Red means the climate is down. So we just started this down climate, but uh, the app got evidence enough uh, for, for this to be a thick dot instead of thin okay instead of thin okay it's thick okay so so that's an important uh, important thing for you to realize because it's a down climate we're going to focus on the stats in the middle and ignore the stats from the left 564 we're going to run it up to six okay uh, so this climate uh, similar to the prior ones we saw is a climate that is likely going to last for six days in this case and this is day one okay so again we are certainly having a go the direction in which to trade is to the downside and we are entering or planning a trade on this market to potentially catch a market movement uh, to the downside that could be in a normal case uh, assuming we are right on the trade uh, for six days and if we're wrong we manage our risk using stop losses and the size as you saw in the prior case okay? so we're going to do the same thing we're going to look at uh, the ema as a reference to have multiple forces pushing the same direction the ema is pointing at 112.55 when 12.55 is around here, and the question is, do we have any UFO? So I'm going to turn on auto UFOs, turn on auto UFOs, and the answer is no. Okay. Notice how technology is telling you 
you have unfilled orders all the way at 63. Okay, and 63, unfortunately, is way, way higher. It's all the way there. So, I mean, uh, visually speaking, you can see that if um, the Swiss yen was to come back towards the EMA, yeah, the EMA will move up, but it's going to move up a little bit. Instead of 55, it may be, you know, 60, but, um, you know, probably not reaching 63. Okay, so if any, uh, I believe based on my own experience using, uh, using this method that uh, this is not going to be a valid trade. We're not going to have this lining up of the EMA with the UFOs as we did before. But if you were to be newer to the methodology uh, and you are not sure, what you could do is very simple. You just put your finger here on the screen, uh, let's say around 50 something, and you just right click, right? You right click right there and you just add an alert. You add an alert. So uh, by the way, with trading is pretty cool because the alerts run on the server side. So even, okay, even if your computer is off, you'll be alerted with a push message on your phone or an email or whatever you decide. So you can just click here and add an alert with pop-ups, emails, notifications on the app, because you also have the trading view app. If you never use it, I recommend you to use it. It's nice and free. So uh, you should have it. It's, it's a tool that in my mind, all traders should use. And um, yeah, so that way, when you get close to the UFO, you can go back to the chart and reevaluate if the setup is valid or not. Right now, I'm going to say we pass, okay? By the way, a uh, quick one. Um, um, let me give you a few tips here. So first, uh, for the ones of you who may want to use TradingView and you have never used TradingView before, okay, so what do you do? www.tradewithufos.com slash slash TradingView, okay? So if you go to this link, Okay, trading trade with UFOs.com. That's our website actually, but we have a shortcut here, slash trading view. That is gonna bring you straight into the trading view page where you uh, become a member of their service. Okay, and when you go there, there is a plan called basic, which is free. So you just click on it, you subscribe to the basic plan, which is free, and now you get access to charts like I do myself. Okay, and you have it and you can use alerts on the server side, et cetera, et cetera. Okay, so uh, tip number one. Tip number two. Uh, earlier, I told you that you guys could be using auto climate. So to use auto climate, same thing. You would come to our website, tradewithufos.com. Okay, but then you add slash join. That's what you add. Okay, and when you get there, you will see multiple memberships. Okay, and the one you want to pick, okay, is the one called Basic Plus. Okay, Basic Plus. The Basic Plus membership. Okay. It has an activation fee of $8, as I said before. It's a one-time payment, and that's it. Then the app is, is granted to you, activated inside your trading view, and you have the app forever, and you can use it on your computer and on your phone, and that's it. There is an activation fee because it's a manual process, and we have a team that takes care of that, and, and that's why uh, this uh, activation fee is out there, okay? Uh, what else? Um, in in that same place, in that same website, okay, in join, there is also another membership, okay, uh, which is also optional, which is the one we would call Pro, okay, and that one is the one that gives you access to the auto UFOs, and that one does have a monthly fee, which is thirty-four dollars. And I guess I'm guessing that here in the room, all of you have different trading methods. Some of you may be using support, resistance, moving averages, FIPS, Bollinger bands, you name it. And uh, you know, I would say that it's pretty pretty optional in the sense that you may need it, you may not need it. But the one on top, you know, uh, it's free and it tells you something very relevant, which is is it time to trade yes or no. And in that sense, uh, you know, I would certainly uh, recommend at least that you take a look uh, because you know at least you know if I share with you um, a little bit of a personal story when I started learning how to trade myself, um, I, I remember very well that uh, there was this time where I looked at my PNL, I was in learning stages, and uh, I looked at my PNL and I had this question for myself, which is, oh my God, if I could just take the trades I, tra I take, just remove a few of the losses I took, okay? If, if I had avoided this trade and that trade and that trade, if I just avoided a few of my losses, I don't even need to trade more or make more money, just avo avoid a few of the losses, oh my God, my results would be brilliant. Okay, well, guess what? That's what we are doing. That's why I started every single trade with a black background chart, giving answer to the question, is it time to trade yes or no? And if so, what direction? 
because that way if i get into a trade and i get stopped out i'm happy to be stopped out but i don't want to get into a trade and then realize oh my god why did i get into this trade in the first place okay maybe you have a good fib number but it's too late okay or maybe it's too soon and it's not confirmed the climate is not confirmed so again uh, that's why i'm doing what i'm doing the way i'm doing okay but anyway next one so uh, euro uh, aud i'll pass on that one because we have the aud we already did that with the eud so what about eurocad eurocad i will pass on this one because we did eurocad so so we, we did the aussie card and we have a card so what about euro swiss so euro swiss that one i'm happy to go for it okay why because uh you know we didn't get anything with the euro we didn't get anything with the swiss okay so certainly i'm open to it it's not a very volatile currency really but uh you know nothing wrong with it oh uh, i just want to accelerate a little bit um we got only 10 minutes left so a quick one a uh, down climate here on, on the weekly time frame suggesting six candles the climate is already 10 so late to the party on the weekly forget about the weekly on the daily statistics suggest five days going down and we are on day two okay so we're good to go okay on the four hour time frame same story we should be trading to the downside during six times four hours and this is the first candle doing that okay so we got potential trades to be planned on both the daily and the four hour setup okay so let's take a look the EMA it's located at 10697 look for the white value okay 10697 and if I turn on auto UFOs uh, so let me see what we've got we got on field orders at one um 0710 okay so 10710 is just a bit too far okay when uh, this currency comes back up yes the email will go back up but uh, again based on my experience i doubt we will get to 0710 so again if you're not sure set up an alert somewhere around here so you can review but for now i'm just gonna skip it because out of my experience uh, i want to use my experience to save a little bit of time okay so what about the four hour time frame with the four hour time frame uh, we got UFOs at 106.98, where the EMA is 106.95. And here, I will say, my friends, we do have an entry. Okay? We do have a valid entry because uh, let's process the whole process properly. So starting from climate, okay, we had one thick dot uh, red color. Okay? One thick dot red color. The climate is down because it's red color. So we look for the stats in the middle. Uh, 5776 okay and as i said a minute ago we are candle one into a potential down climate which may be six candles going down okay so we are on time to plan on a trade okay we are on time to plan on a trade it's not time to take the trade yet okay we need we need for price to retrace back to 10698 and short at this point because of the unfilled orders and also because the ema is at this price point so we want to accomplish a phenomenon such as what happened here where it came to the ema and then it, it drops okay so we want to accomplish the same thing come to the ema and then it drops okay that's what we want to do so we have uh, on-field orders likely going to be added at this price because of the ema on-field orders already in the market waiting to get filled at this price and the climate is defined and the climate is about to propagate or at least statistics suggest that's going to be the case so this is all uh, giving us a go for a good entry so the question is what about the target i'm looking at green ufos on the four hour time frame okay so zooming out zooming out zooming out zooming out zooming out looking for green ufos i have none in the four hour time frame what about the daily yes on the daily time frame we do have green ufos let's take a look where are those ufos Okay, let's take a look where are those UFOs. And those UFOs are located at 106.61. Okay. So, in other words, our target in this trade will be 1.0661. And I'm going to make it 62 because it's a buy order. So, I'm, I'm basically um, adjusting it to the fourth decimal place. Okay. So, this is going to be my final target. Current price is of seven. Okay. So, and the entry was a little higher so we are talking about like 150 pip move something like that that's a nice trade and this one i would say is actually more reasonable than the one before uh, given the amount of room to travel before we get to the final target okay so uh, anyway so that's it i got the entry the stop and the target so i need to uh, calculate the size for the trade 
and therefore I'll be able to place an order. So we are selling uh, at 106.98, okay, which again, we're using 98 because of this UFO. We're going to use uh, 107.066 as a reference for the stop. The stop will go above, okay, so uh, because of the UFO again. Okay? So uh, stop, uh, we're going to use 107066. Okay, 107066. Remember, I need to round to the four decimal place. That would be seven. And then I add three pips for breathing space because of the decentralized nature of Forex, where each broker may have different prices. So I'm going to make 07 to be 10. Okay. In other words, this trade is risking 12 pips and the target is very nicely located, okay, which is 0662. Okay, 10662. So in other words, I am risking 12 pips to make 36. This is a three to one trade, certainly valid, uh, certainly uh, much more achievable than what I said before. And therefore, my only step is going to be to calculate the size. Let's have the same assumption. Let's pretend I want to risk $100 per trade. So that would uh, allow me to take this trade with 81 micros, which on MT4, you would input that as 081. Okay. okay. So knowing all of this, let's bring MT4 and let's do the trade. Let's bring MT4 and let's do the trade. Okay, so here is my uh, MT4, my mobile MT4. Uh, I don't have Euro Swiss franc, so I'm going to tap on the plus sign, uh, tap on uh, FX Pro uh, and look for Euro Swiss franc. Okay. Uh, the Euro Swiss franc is right here on the screen. Um, I'm going to tap on it, and now I'm ready to go for an order, okay? And good practices again from top to bottom. First, set limit. Second, the size, which we said is going to be 81. So, 81. Then the entry price, which is going to be 106.98, if I'm not mistaken. Yes, this is correct. And the stop, we said, is going to be 107.10, if I am not mistaken. Yes, this is correct. And the final target is going to be 106.62, if I am not mistaken. And yes, this is correct. Again, a confirmation, good practices first. 81, that goes with 81. And 98, that goes with 98. And 62, that goes with 62. And 0710 goes with 0710. So the trade is fine. I only have one thing to do. Click on place order. And the moment I do that, the order is in. Now I got two orders in the system waiting to get filled, uh, which are uh, non-correlated markets, uh, but both using the same method or same approach, uh, which is basically uh, stacking odds in our favor in, when it comes to catching catching the move. Okay, catching the move. We just need to use uh, a little bit of patience and wait for uh, the euro Swiss franc to come back to the, this price point so we can short then and ride the move safely instead of shorting here as a breakout, which again. Uh, I'm not saying you cannot do that, but uh, now, you know, from 78 to 62, you will really have very limited amount of profit. So, uh, you know, I'm, I'm, I would not be a fan of doing so. Okay. Okay. So let me take a look at your questions, guys, uh, because we are basically reaching the top of the hour. So uh, if you have a question, I would kind of take your question. Uh, and if not, we will conclude the session um, because obviously we don't, we don't have time to plan another trade. But hopefully today's session, especially if you attended last week uh, as well, uh, hopefully all of this is clicking little by little uh, and uh, you are getting my point or or my rationale so you can replicate that uh, that yourself okay and by the way if um, when when you are doing all those things you were to have any question uh, you can certainly shoot an email to my team uh, reach at trade let me write this correctly reach at uh, trade with ufo.com and uh, you know we can certainly give you answers you know if you if you're on you know you you know you have a like, a question out of something I explained today, maybe I went too fast or, or anything else, um, you know, we'll be more than happy to, um, to get connected with you and, and, and discuss whatever is it that uh, we can help you with. Okay. Anyway, so it seems that um, it seems that you guys have followed well. Uh, I don't hear any additional new questions. So I am guessing then that uh, uh, it was good today then that we got together and you guys uh, hopefully enjoyed the session. Uh, if you don't mind giving me a, just a super quick feedback uh, 
about the format of the session um, because again uh, i'm here to help you the most i can and uh, my intention is the best but maybe maybe there's something i'm not thinking about that could help you better if you guys have any any feedback about the, se the session uh, could be the session itself could be the speed of delivery or could be maybe the format maybe you you would prefer to spend more time looking at uh, the calendar uh, maybe you would prefer i spend more time looking at something maybe you would like that someday we talk about i don't know brokers whatever uh, just let me know please i, I will welcome it and uh, and uh, I'm, I'm asking for for feedback meaning that uh, it could be good feedback if you enjoy the session but if there is something that you you didn't appreciate or didn't help you uh, i am also asking for a, a positive or construction construct cons, uh, constructing critique okay so you you don't only uh, need to be nice it's okay for you to phrase anything uh, if uh, there is something i i didn't do that uh, would have been good for you guys okay so uh, i really mean it and uh, if there's anything just you, you just need to type it and that's it okay uh, mike uh, if by the time the price retraces the std number of days is enough then cancel the trade very good yes absolutely if it took a long 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 time for a price to come back there uh, and you know you, you were good when it comes to the, uh, the climate exposure but it took so long you know for the market to come back up that then next thing you know instead of being in that uh, climate uh, that should last for six days now you already got to six days or surpass six days then the probability of the drop to happen it's it's uh, it's still there but the probability of the drop to last is not is not there any longer and if the last if the drop is not going to last so then it means that your trade that was supposed to be a three to one may be a one to one and then i would argue that it's not even worth it just go trade another currency so long story short you're a hundred percent right mike you would want to cancel the trade at that point okay uh, Amol, perhaps accept brokers from audience. I love it. I love your, your suggestion. Absolutely, Amol. So uh, next uh, next time that we are together, uh, certainly I will be I will be asking asking you to and be ready uh, uh, that you you are the ones proposing which currencies you want me to check and or maybe if you have some sort of a market setup uh, or you have a trade running at the at that moment in time, I'll be certainly happy to take a look at all of this as well. Okay, or if if a buy level already hit, uh, okay, so we can, yeah, very good, perfect. You know, um, last Thursday, um, uh, we were doing the intraday sessions, and because it's intraday, everything was lower time frame, and therefore we executed trades where we got filled together during the session. With the swing trades, it's always more difficult to get filled at the same time because the entry price points are normally further away, okay? But certainly, I'll keep that in mind, Mike, and if there is any hot trade about to happen, about to happen we can certainly uh, run that past you as well. Very guys, very nice everybody. Love the teamwork. Uh, love to spend this time with you guys and uh, see you on Thursday. Bye bye everybody. Be safe. Bye bye. Take care.